I was always very curious about how things worked. From the beginning, I fell in love with textiles and the idea of doing things that no one had ever done before. Ironically, 40 odd years ago, I started working exclusively with a product that humans have used for thousands of years. Something most people think of as traditional, or expected, as old. And what I learned, and continue to learn, is that this product is anything but. It is forever new. This product redefines what we can do, changes the game entirely, allows innovation in creativity and performance, again and again. From the world of the red carpet to some of the most remote and unforgiving environments in the world, wool is a material of miracles. My name is Roy Kettlewell. I'm a PhD chemist and textiles consultant. My work over the last 40 years has taken me to over 40 countries and every continent, apart from one, Antarctica. It's got a good climate for wool, but not too much of a textile or a fashion industry. I've also worked with many of the world's leading textile manufacturers and fashion brands, from Brooks Brothers and Marks and Spencers, to Levi Strauss, Timberland, L.L. Bean, Smart Wool, Thomas Pink and more. As a global manager of innovation for Walmart Company, I spent a lot of time training some very talented designers, buyers and sustainability experts to understand more about wool so that they could then develop new products for retailers and customers. I'm going to spend the next few minutes telling you about that experience and about what I've seen in the work and the innovation of processes and designers and what that does for retailers and consumers the world over. Whether you're more interested in couture fashion, performance, athletic wear, industrial fabrics or interior design, I found it helps to break the story of wool into three sections. First of all, why wool is the fabric designers choose first? Secondly, what makes wool such a proven performer? And third, the benefits of wool as natural and as a renewable fibre. So over the years I've spoken to many designers. Um, they do give me one interesting piece of feedback and that is that when they're designing garments they like to work with wool because of four factors that uh, contribute to that uh, special product they can create. Those factors are fairly straightforward. You've got the structure of the fabric. By that I mean the way that they can actually convert a two-dimensional fabric into a, a three-dimensional garment. They like the way the fabric drapes and folds. So when they let the fabric flow over the body, it's almost organic in the way it works. Then of course there's the, uh, the touch or the feel. And um, it's the feel of the fabric that is really going to resonate with their client. So they like the way that wool can give that to the client as soon as they touch the garment. And then of course, you've got the visual aspect of a garment. And there you've got, uh, in wool, such a wide range of colours you can work with. Wool just loves to absorb colour. And all of those four things, structure, drape, feel and colour, that's what makes the designers really like to work with wool. When we talk about structure, we're really talking uh, about a fairly vague term. So what I want to do is try and um, explain what I mean by structure in terms of wool, not just the fabric, but the fibre, the yarn, the, um, the finish on the fabric. And I think we can uh, illustrate that quite well with this um, jacket. Uh, for example, the jacket is a three-dimensional object. It's made from a two-dimensional fabric. 
And in order to create that three-dimensional structure, you've got several, um, let's say, factors coming together. The first factor is uh, within the fibre itself. The fibre is an interesting beast because it's got a molecular structure, a, uh, an internal structure that allows it to expand and contract. And it's that expansion and contraction that really um, makes life easy for the tailor because it's the tailor that has to actually get this to work. And uh, so because the fibre allows the fabric to become more malleable, it enables the tailor to get this really nice uh, appearance on the shoulder. It also allows the tailor to get this beautiful roll uh, on the lapel. Uh, this is rather difficult and unless the fabric is forgiving, uh, it's very difficult to get that to work. The third element is the way the fabric allows seams to be created that are smooth and beautifully formed. Uh, unless the fabric had some elasticity in it and allowed the needle to pass through, you would end up with a rather untidy seam. Now, all of those beautiful elements of the garment, the lapel roll, the seams uh, and the shoulder roll, those are created through a fibre that is living and breathing. It absorbs moisture and allows all of these two-dimensional fabrics to be put back into a beautiful three-dimensional jacket. The best way of illustrating uh, drape, I think, is to actually compare a wool garment with maybe a non-wool garment, maybe a cotton garment. And this example here, uh, very nice dress, but you can see the way the, uh, the fabric hangs. It's very stiff um, and um, it doesn't flow over uh, a woman's body. Contrast that with this dress, which is a beautiful wool crepe dress. Now, the first thing that you'll see is the pleats here. These pleats uh, very gently and gracefully disappear into nothingness and that's a result of the way the fabric drapes. The second thing you'll notice is that when the dress moves, because let's say the woman is walking, then the fabric will sway with the garment and it accentuates the, the movement of the lady. Um, the third thing I just want to show is the way that the, uh, the fabric is so soft and fluid. And again, this contributes uh, to the elegance of um, a, a woman who is wearing a wool uh, garment. So, uh, drape, it's a combination. It's a combination of interactions between the fibre structure, the yarn structure and the fabric structure. And of course, a great designer also has to use that and understand it in order to create the shape and the form of the garment that will best add to a woman's feeling of pure luxury when she wears a wool fabric. I like to focus on the garment when I first see it and the first thing that I do is I feel or touch the sleeve of the fabric. And from that, there I'm getting a sense of what the fabric has been made from, what the fabric is um, going to do when it's next to my body. And remember, feel is not just the surface uh, on the outside, it's also the way the fabric is going to interact with your skin. What I found in my experience is that the finer fibres, like the American uh, Merinos, these are the ones that give you uh, the most special uh, touch and handle in a uh, woven fabric like this. So, touch, feel, whatever you want to call it, is an interaction between the fabric, the fibres and your fingers. And it's a really crucial part of any uh, decision that a consumer makes when thinking about purchasing wool. What I'd like to do is explain why wool is so special when it comes to colour. The 
molecular structure or the chemistry of the fibre is such that it actually loves dye stuffs and the, the um, entities that create the colour. And the wool fibre is able to attract a dye stuff and then lock it into the centre of the fibre. And this is slightly different compared to many other fibres where the dye sits on the outside of the, the fibre surface. Now, the consequence of sitting on the outside of the surface is that that dye is easily removed. And so garments can often uh, start to look old and worn out. The beauty of wool and the reason why so many designers actually love this fibre is because when they decide on a colour, it stays there. It's going to be there for the entire uh, life of that garment. And it's that aspect, I think, that uh, means you know, their original concept is there with the garment for a lifetime. Now, to give you some idea of the range of colours you can go with in wool, I mean, we've, we've already seen this, um, this suit, beautiful blue colour, but that's not the limit. We've got here a beautiful uh, pink, which is pure new wool. Um, we can also dye less, uh, more subdued shades. We've got a green that works um, just as well. But all of these are possible because of the way it can accept uh, dye stuffs. Everything I've said about colour has really been focused on apparel. But as a designer, you might want to work with carpets, you might want to work with upholstery or blankets. But the same principles apply. Once the fibre has accepted the colour and locked it away in the structure of the fibre, it's there for life. Wool as a fibre is um, probably one of the more innovative fibres around and a good example of this would be uh, this garment here. So instead of aiming for a solid colour, what we're aiming for is a gradation and it gives a kind of vintage, uh, quite interesting, up-to-date uh, appearance to the garment. So wool doesn't have to be old-fashioned, um, you can keep up with uh, latest trends quite easily by modifying the, the colour of the, uh, the fibre. Now, you'll also recall uh, that wool has scales. Uh, now, these are kind of like the shingles on uh, the roof of your house. They overlap. And because of that overlapping, uh, they can create two things, the beautiful handle of the fibre, uh, but they also uh, create a potential for wool to shrink. And what we found is a really easy way of modifying those scales to make them thinner and so they're less noticeable. In fact, as a result of that, not only do you stop the shrinkage, uh, you can actually make the wool fibre feel more like cashmere. And that adds value. Uh, it also adds luster and shine uh, to the fabric to give it a kind of a luxurious uh, aspect that you might not normally expect uh, for the, uh, the fibre. So we call this mercerising, and that's really we're borrowing a term from the cotton industry uh, which uses the process to make uh, their fibre more lustrous and softer. And that's exactly what we do with wool. Different process, but the end result is an incredibly uh, soft, luxurious and also machine washable fabric. Now, as I mentioned earlier, wool has these scales. Uh, in some cases, those scales can cause us a problem. You know, they can cause the garment to shrink. Um, so you have a man's sweater that you put in your washing machine and suddenly uh, out comes this boy's sweater. Um, for me, felting, uh, as we call it, is actually a benefit because what it allows you to do is change the texture of the fabric. And I've got a good example here where what we've done is to change the texture of the fabric by modifying the shrinkage of individual yarns. So what we can do then is create felted or shrunken areas and also create these little unfelted areas. The overall appearance is one of texture. Now, these are just three innovations, but they do illustrate that wool doesn't have to be always thought of as this traditional um, basic fibre. 
it's got such a lot of attributes that you can manipulate and create interesting, up-to-date garments. In a high-performance environment, comfort is essential. And the wool fibre has this inherent ability to uh, manage both the temperature next to the skin and also the moisture content next to the skin. And of course, the beauty of the wool fibre is that it comes in many different types. And there are fine fibres out there that really are good next to the skin. Wool is well known for its ability to keep you uh, warm. It's not specifically the wool fibre that does this job, it's actually the air spaces between the fibres that help to insulate. Air, for example, is nearly ten times more insulative than most common textile fibres. So the secret of wool's uh, success in this area is that it has crimp or waviness uh, in the fibre, a natural crimp, that keeps fibres apart, generates air spaces and thus gives you uh, plenty of air uh, to keep you warm. And that air and that fibre also help to keep you comfortable because they're managing the moisture that might be coming off your skin when you do get uh, warmer. Now, contrast that with the, uh, the wool fibre that's designed to be worn next to the skin to keep you cool. There, the aim is to have very few air spaces. But you still need some means of getting heat away from the skin surface. And there, the wool fibre's got this unique ability to manage moisture vapour. So the vapour that comes off your skin is absorbed by the fibre and then transmitted along the fibre so that it can be released to the outside. Um, some other fibres, especially synthetic ones, don't have this ability. And we, in uh, some trials that were done many years ago, have shown that the wool fibre can actually transmit 25% more heat away from the skin surface than an equivalent polyester fibre. So wool is very good at keeping you warm because of its ability to maintain air spaces. It's also very good at helping to keep you cool because it transmits heat along with moisture from your skin to the outside surface. Using wool next to the skin is often considered to be crazy. You know, you're going to be uncomfortable because of itchiness and scratchiness. And it's true. If you were to make a garment from this sort of wool, I agree. But these garments are made from the finest American wools and these wools behave in a different way. A thick wool fibre, for example, in this garment, imagine my thumb is a thick fibre, pressing on the skin, it presses hard onto the skin. But the fine merino or American fibres, they have ability to bend as they touch your skin and that puts less pressure on the skin nerve endings. So, you're going to feel comfortable, not just because of the moisture management, the temperature management, but also because you're not going to get the sensation of prickly fibres. Wool uh, as a fibre is actually designed by nature to protect you from UV radiation. And you can get that same protection when you wear wool next to the skin. So you, you can wear a lightweight garment and you will be getting protection from UV radiation, which is good news, especially in some of the hotter climates. Using wool garments next to the skin uh, does generate the concern about remaining fresh, especially when you've been doing something active like yoga or running down the, the beach. The wool fibre doesn't have to kill bacteria in order to maintain freshness. What it does, it absorbs the smells of sweat uh, the sweat being decomposed. And then when you do actually wash the garment, the washing action actually releases those odours and smells and you've got an absolutely fresh garment at the end of it. Wool is not the strongest of textile fibres by any means. 
but where it lacks in outright strength, it makes up for in its elasticity. And this elasticity is the result of the molecular structure and the configuration of the molecules within the fibre. They're more like a coiled spring. And when you stretch the fibre, when you put it under stress, these springs extend and of course when you release the stress, the springs go back together again. So you can stretch the fibre 30% without any worries. So what this gives you is a fibre that's easily stretched, it's easily bent. In fact, you can bend it 20,000 times and it won't break. This bendiness and stretchiness just makes sportswear feasible often without even including a synthetic spandex or uh, lycra fibre. So not only does it make sense for apparel sportswear, for you maybe in the interiors arena, it also makes a great deal of sense for carpets because carpets are simply trodden on and the fibre can bounce back uh, after every step. It makes a lot of sense for upholstery and that's probably why many of the suburban transport systems, railways, they actually specify wool fibres for their seating because it's so tough. It's also stain repellent and so on. But Essentially, what we have is a wool fibre that's durable. It's durable not just for sportswear, but also for interiors. Hey, hey, oh, oh. Wool only needs rain and sunshine uh, for it to grow. Of course, rain and sunshine help the grass to grow and that enables the sheep to feed and to thrive. The fibre itself is also biodegradable. When we finish with the product it will decompose back into nutrients which will actually feed the next batch of grass that the sheep would need to eat. Also interesting is that it's a renewable fibre Every year the sheep grows a new fleece and that fleece captures carbon as it's growing which as we know is good for the environment. So we have in wool a natural fibre, it's organic, it's biodegradable and it's renewable. From my observations of ranchers around the world it's almost to a man that they are more concerned about the animals than they are about themselves. They're concerned about the environment in which the animals uh, feed, uh, thrive, and essentially they're stewards of the land as well as being stewards of the, um, the, the sheep themselves. If the sheep is not happy, then the, the farmer is not happy. Mainly because he knows the sheep may suffer, but it's also an economic uh, sense. Because if the farmer doesn't look after the sheep and the land, he's going to lose both. The rancher really does have to work in concert with the sheep and the environment. Every year the sheep grows a fleece. And the wool on the fleece, it could be two to three inches or even more long and so the farmer has to take off that wool and he, this wool um, essentially comes off rather like this what we um, would say is the raw fibre the raw greasy wool and um, that's carried out in a process which we normally call shearing shearing is essentially the same as going to the hairdresser we all need to get our hair cut occasionally, it's just the same for the sheep. The farmer or the rancher has the duty to do that. Now, the shearing operation itself uh, is carried out with electric shears. And after that, the sheep is away, it will get some feed and um, it will forget about the whole experience. Wool is full of amino acids and many of these amino acids contain nitrogen and as we know nitrogen uh, is essential for plant growth so yes wool does actually contribute 
uh, nutrition to the soil in which it decomposes. Several years ago, I was involved in some trials where we buried garments made from wool, from cotton, from synthetics such as polyamide, polyester and polyacrylic. And then, after three months, we dug them up to see how things were progressing. We found that the wool garment had actually nearly decomposed. Uh, we had trouble finding it. The cotton garments were decomposed a little, but the synthetic ones, they were almost pristine. In fact, I don't have an answer if you ask me how long it took the polyester garments to decompose because I'm only 63 years old. We're, in many cases, polluting the environment when we wash our synthetic garments. Uh, for example, um, garments like this fleece shed fibres uh, when we wash them, every time we wash them. In fact, something like 35% of all microplastics that are found in the waterways are associated with textile fibres. Now this cannot be good for the environment. We're going to end up eating our own textiles. The wool fibre, that decomposes naturally. So we're not going to be polluting the waterways and we're not going to be eating uh, our own textiles. I hope I've helped provide some information to dispel some of the common misunderstandings about wool. For example, myth one, it's bulky and heavy. Modern wools in multiple weights and weaves allow for light flowing fabrics. Myth two, it's itchy and scratchy. Wool has always meant a luxurious feel in suits and dresses, but today wool athletic apparel is soft and comfortable, even directly against the skin. Myth three, it's difficult to care for. Modern wool products maintain their shape and colour and are naturally stain and odour resistant and are often washing machine safe. Myth four, I'm allergic to wool. Wool and human hair have the same chemical makeup, so while many people with sensitive skin feel uncomfortable wearing wool, they are experiencing a sensitivity to coarse wool fibre rather than an allergic reaction. Today's American superfine wool fibres eliminate those reactions and allow people with sensitive skin to enjoy all the benefits of wool products without experiencing the discomfort they might have experienced in the past. I hope what I've been able to tell you today has really given you some insights into this amazing fibre. And through those insights, some ways of incorporating this amazing wool fibre into your design ideas of the future.